Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back so now we will discuss three cases elasticity of demand elasticity of supply all we have discussed uh, using those concepts we, u, using those knowledge whatever we gained through uh, different diagrams different demand curve different supply curve along those demand curve and supply curve what is the elasticity of demand value what is the elasticity of supply value and so on using that concepts we will now elaborate three uh, very interesting cases okay and all these three cases uh, we are taken we are taking from the book what we are following right so first one case is there in the book say uh, can good news for farming may be bad news for farmers So, one case we are starting with with a with a question good news for farming can it be bad news for farmers. So, uh, when we are telling that good news for farming what we are referring perhaps uh, production technology or the technological know how what this farming people or uh, farmer farming community people what they are using to produce some agricultural product look at here we have used here FARM right. So, it is an agricultural product right. So, perhaps that is improved or there is some innovation take place uh, takes place in the production uh, process okay, or production technology right. So, if that happens under the satirist paribas condition what will happen? Suppose uh, one farmer is producing say, say wheat right and what uh, to uh, produce wheat what kind of factor factors of production that farmer uh, needs to hire we all know right some say wheat seeds so maybe some water some fertilizer maybe some bullock bullock kind of plow right or some uh, animal dragged plow no Tradi primitive or traditional plows so using that he is he is using or he is producing some uh, uh, wheat right and he has some uh, certain piece of land say maybe one acre ok. Now, suppose technological know how uh, in that uh, that uh, farming activity is have improved. So, improved technological know how improve how we can capture that perhaps earlier he was using say some bullock kind of uh, plow now he is using say maybe some uh, tractor or maybe power tiller or something like that some machine right. So, it is an technological improvement. So, if that is the case what will happen given all other resource vector or all other input vector technological uh, innovation takes place. So, definitely output will increase. So, as a result supply of the by that particular farm supply of wheat what he or she is producing that will increase. So, his supply curve will move rightward ok. So, so suppose initially this was the supply curve so denoted by S 1 let our supply curve will move right or say suppose S 2 as usual we are measuring quantity supplied quantity demanded also in the horizontal axis and price in the vertical axis. So, that farmer is producing wheat right suppose this is the wheat demand curve in the market that is the demand curve in the market look good news for farming that means the technology using which that farmer is producing this commodity right the technological innovation happens in that technology right as a result his supply he, he, he could be able to produce more quantity of output using the same amount of inputs what he was using earlier as a result that is why his supply curve has shifted from S 1 to S 2 position right. So, so demand curve I hope that everybody understood why the supply curve will move rightward because at every possible price suppose this is the price we have discussed that earlier 
earlier he could supply this much, now he could supply this much, his supply has increased right that is why it will be uh, rightward, rightward shift of the supply curve right. So, okay. so So, this is the situation. So, what will be the equilibrium? So, initial equilibrium point say E and later equilibrium due to supply movement say suppose this is E 1. So, when equilibrium because we know that equilibrium price and quantity will be determined in the market by the interaction of demand supply curve. In this particular case supply curve shifts rightward, but demand curve does not shift because technological innovation in production of the commodity does not have any implication or apparent implication or immediate implication on the demand curve right. So, that is why demand curve as it was ok. So, initially this was the price say suppose P star ok and this much quantity of wheat that farmer could be able to sell in the market because that much demand was there at this price right. Due to his increase in production and demand curve is not changing at all. So, equilibrium price falls to P 1 star price P 1 star level. So, equilibrium price so movement of the supply curve from S 1 to S 2 equilibrium price price equilibrium price it falls from O P star to O P 1 star ok. And equilibrium quantity suppose this was Q star this is Q 1 star and equilibrium quantity it increases from O Q star to O Q 1 star right given this diagram. So, what is the income of that farmer? So, income of the farmer initially was this area of this rectangle O Q star E P star. So, initial income initial income was O Q star E P star that area that rectangular area ok. Later, later income is basically the area of O Q 1 star E 1 P 1 star that rectangular area. Now, the question is if we compare this rectangular area and this rectangular area if we show that this later income rectangular area is larger, then we can tell that good news for farming is actually a good news for this farmer. Alternatively, if we see that this is larger than this one ok or initial income was larger, later income actually falls, we can tell that good news for farming is actually becoming the bad news to farmer because farmer's income is fallen. Okay, income is uh, has fallen due to this uh, increase in production right. So, let us see where the, what is the comparison if we compare that thing uh, let us see what is the relationship between these two areas ok. So, can good news for farming can be a bad news for farmer how we are addressing that first we are capturing good news for farming. Okay. Farming that, that, that production activity related some good news means definitely some sort of innovation activities or some uh, something happens in the background. So, that production or overall production level has increased using the same input vector, same resource what that farmer was using before this, before this innovation take place right. Now, uh, although he is able to produce more whether his income is increasing or not that is the question right. So, when S 1 was the supply curve O P star was the price what that farmer were getting for, for every unit of the product what he is producing and he was producing O Q star. So, total uh, total income what he was getting by selling this product is O P star into O Q star that is why this area of the this area that is why this area is coming into the picture ok. When supply has increased his production has increased he is getting bumper crop right. So, price equilibrium price becomes O P 1 star how we interpret we have as we told 
its interpretation is that for every unit of the product he will get O P 1 star amount of price. Now, how many units he is producing? He is producing this much unit O Q 1 star amount. So, total income will be how much? O P 1 star multiplied with O Q 1 star. Okay. So, that is why this area is the his income. Okay. Now, whether we will compare these two income which is larger or which is smaller. You can understand that since it is a agricultural commodity, perhaps it is a necessary commodity you know this wheat, rice, this kind of commodity you know, those are the food items for, for the society or people. right? So, these kinds of uh, commodities are usually necessary commodity and as you know that necessary commodities usually have elasticity of demand is less. Okay. Necessary commodities, commodity which are necessary to us, our own price elasticity of demand for that commodity will be less because since it is necessary, as we clarified already, since it is necessary, even if price increases, I cannot cut down that much consumption of that commodity because it is a necessary commodity to me. I have to use some amount of that commodity. Alternatively, when price falls, I cannot increase my consumption that much. Right, perhaps little bit more, but not that much because it is a necessary commodity. Perhaps my family requires say uh, 20 kg per month. Okay. Earlier, perhaps because price was very high, I was trying to uh, purchase 18 kg okay. and 2 kg I was trying to substi substitute by some other relatively cheaper food items. Okay. Now, when it price becomes a little bit less, I am trying to be consume instead of 18 kg perhaps 19 kg perhaps 20 kg, but beyond 20 kg I do not know I do not need at all. It is a necessary commodity and I do not need more than that because that is enough to maintain my family per week okay, or per, per month whatever it is. Right. So, that is why if we have a necessary commodity uh, consumer or the commodity is necessary to the consumer, then that consumer will be uh, or behavior of that consumer will be less responsive to the price of that particular commodity. Right. Since it is an agricultural commodity farming we are talking about. So, agricultural commodities are usually necessary commodity wheat, rice, this kinds of things if you consider those are necessary from the consumers perspective who are who are consuming this commodity. right? So, since it is a necessary commodity its elasticity is less or we can tell demand is inelastic, demand is inelastic. demand is inelastic means what? Elasticity of demand value absolute term is less than 1 absolute elasticity because elasticity of demand is negative right that is why I am telling absolute value of elasticity is 1 uh, less than 1 right. What is the implication? Implication is that let us go we have already discussed we have already discussed that. Okay. So, actually what is happening? Equilibrium price is falling and quantity how much he will able to sell in the market it is increasing. In the diagram if we go to the diagram look at here equilibrium price is falling quantity is increasing. Okay. So, when price is falling quantity is increasing absolute elasticity value is less than 1 by virtue of the fact that this commodity what that farmer is producing is a necessary commodity to its customers who are, who are consuming this commodity who are purchasing this commodity from this farmer in the market. right? So, since it is a necessary, so elasticity of uh, demand, own price elasticity of demand is less than 1, own price elasticity of demand is basically del Q by Q, and denominator is del P by P. right? It is less than 1 means the rate at which del Q by Q or quantity is changing, price is changing much more faster rate. As a result, this ratio becoming less than 1 absolute value. right? So, the rate at which price is falling because price is falling in any case. So, rate at which price is changing that is much more faster than the rate at which quantity is changing. right? So, price is falling much more faster than the quantity is increasing. So, resultant will be what revenue will fall. Okay? So, with this we can establish 
that since revenue is falling revenue falls that means that later income this uh, this green color circle income area is lower than the yellow color circle income area. So, green color income is basically the later income after the uh, bumper harvest after the bumper harvest whatever income that farmer is getting and this um, yellow color circled area is basically the before that technological innovation takes place whatever income he was getting earlier right. So, with this we can establish that yes good news for farming can be a, in fact a bad news for farmer right. So, that is the thing. So, it is an interesting thing for you people you understand that when we are getting that bumper crops that may not be necessarily is very very good news for the farming community right due to bumper crops supply of the product will increase in the market as a result farmers will get less price ok. But we do not know how much uh, income whether income will increase or income will fall ok. In fact, if this commodity what that farmer is producing that commodity is a is a necessary commodity to the customers ok his income will go down because elasticity value is less than one or demand for that commodity will be inelastic ok. So, this is the our the first case let us go to our the uh, second case ok. Say we are going to a new page ok second case ok. Why can't OPEC maintain high price for long high price of petroleum for long. Say let me tell you the story what is the story. So, OPEC O P E C OPEC is a cartel or a, a group of certain countries which are the major producer of petroleum products worldwide ok. So, its full name is organization of petroleum exporting countries organization of petroleum exporting countries. So, who are the members sometimes back we mentioned this OPEC let me remind you uh, mostly the Middle East countries like Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Iran, Kuwait these countries then some Jordan, Libya this kind of countries some of them are also northern African countries ok. So, these and some other countries means which are not in that geographical locality northern Africa and Middle East, Saudi Arabia and what we are mentioning no all those countries that you will see that same geographical locality they are very close to each other ok. Those are the major suppliers of the petroleum product they are major producers of the petroleum product and entire global petroleum demand actually is met by uh, importing from them or on the other hand or alternatively these countries are major exporters of the petroleum product to the other countries ok. And some other countries also which are away from uh, that localities like Venezuela, Venezuela is uh, uh, south uh, I think south American countries northern part of the south America that south America is a continent no. So, northern part of that continent I think this country uh, um, situated Venezuela, Venezuela also I think is a part of this OPEC, OPEC member ok. So, these countries what they will happen say suppose petroleum you can understand that petroleum is a necessary commodity right for everybody right it is a it is an essential fuel ok. So, it is demand curve say global demand curve something like this ok and suppose this is the supply curve in 1960, 70 sometimes back quite early ok OPEC member they set together and decided we will voluntarily cut down our production like how say ok Saudi Arabia may be was producing per day 1000 barrel of petroleum right. Saudi Arabia is telling that no, no, no I will cut down this 1000 barrel to 800 barrel ok. And similarly they negotiate among themselves and they are every member of that group they are cutting down their production voluntarily. What is the target? Target is that they will try to 
control that supply this way if say whatever say 5 countries are there or 6 countries are there right each of them are petroleum producer whatever they can produce each of them if they voluntarily cut down their production what will happen total amount of production globally will fall because these members only are the global producer of the petroleum it will fall so as a result in the market world petroleum market supply curve will shift leftward so like s1 to s2 kind of thing in the diagram so as a result what will happen resultant thing is that earlier they could able to they jointly the, all the group of the countries this opec countries they could sell this much of petroleum earlier and for per unit of petroleum this was the price so o q star o p star this was the initial equilibrium price quantity situation when they are voluntarily cutting down their production supply curve is moving leftward so supply curve shifting from s1 to s2 and as a result they could sell little bit less amount of petroleum but they will get little bit more price per unit of the petroleum okay so what will happen happen is that because this petroleum is a necessary commodity to the customer of the petroleum because it's a, it's a very important commodity uh, or in important fuel item for everybody all the countries all over the globe okay so as a result it's a necessary commodity its elasticity value is less than 1 elasticity of demand value is less than 1 so what will happen price will increase quantity will fall since elasticity value is less than 1 that means the rate at which price is changing quantity is changing much more slower rate so price will increase much more faster than the fall in quantity as a result income so price into quantity that we call revenue no that is the revenue that will increase because price is increasing much more faster than the quantity fall right so revenue will increase so that is the motive to voluntarily cut down the production if we cut down voluntarily our production saudi arabia venezuela all the opec members who are there no kuwait iraq iran everybody's income will increase earlier they were getting whatever income today now they will get more income although they are cutting down their production so what will happen the why can't opec maintain high price for petroleum for long so for they say suppose in 1970 suppose they have decided that and and immediately in the 1970 or 71 they are getting that high price and they are each of their revenue or income is increasing income for selling uh, from selling petroleum right but what happened in the longer period no 3 years 4 years 5 years because because now petroleum becomes expensive because price level has increased right due to cut down the production or due to supply shortage right price has increased so since petroleum product is becoming dearer to the customers customers are trying to adjust their behavior over the long run that we told that longer span no perhaps uh, short i am i am commuting from my residence to my workplace by my private car okay when the fuel price is increasing very high what i will do perhaps the longer time immediately i can't cut down that behavior or adjust I can't adjust that behavior, okay. But over one year, over two year, over the longer period, perhaps I will switch to uh, availing, uh, say, public transport system instead of uh, driving my own car, right? So over time, what's happened for the for the longer period, this elasticity demand for the petroleum is becoming more elastic. So this becomes one, uh, become greater than one, right? It is becoming more elastic demand. Okay. So, as a result what will happen when elasticity is greater than 1 that means what the rate at which quantity is in uh, adjusting price is changing much more slower rate as a result this, this ratio is becoming greater than 1 right. So, in any case they cut down their production supply curve shifted leftward but demand curve initially was this kind okay, little bit steeper uh, over the time demand curve is becoming be little bit flatter as you know that more flatter demand curve elasticity will be more and more right. So, as a result elasticity also is becoming larger than 1 or it is becoming more elastic demand for the petroleum ok. As a result they cannot or eventually their revenue revenue is falling because the rate at which quantity will fall will much more faster rate than the price increment in that case.
Okay. So, as a result revenue will fall, their income will fall. So, that is why, why can't OPEC maintain high price of petroleum for long? So, when their income is falling, then they are sitting again and they are telling that no, 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 perhaps something wrong is happening, let us do not voluntarily. So, because price is falling, because, because of this elasticity, because high elasticity, no, the kind of high price they are expecting price is not, uh, okay, okay, let me, let me take an another uh, appraise diagram, okay. They are cutting down voluntarily their supply and supply curve moving from S1 to S2. So, when demand curve was very steep, look at here how much price increment was there, but eventually demand curve is becoming flatter, it is not that much steep, right? Because over the longer period, people are adjusting their behavior, okay, and demand curve is becoming flatter. Now, look at here how much price is increasing, price is increasing little bit less than the earlier situation right. So, that is the thing and as a result the whatever price they were expecting price is not becoming that much high. So, over the longer period OPEC cannot maintain the high price of petroleum by voluntarily cut, cutting down its production. This is the one side of the story which we can explain using just elasticity of demand, elasticity of supply even though we using those concepts. Okay. But, OPEC is a basically this OPEC no, it is a it is a cartel, cartel in the oligopoly market sometimes later we will discuss oligopoly market that time we will realize that cartel is very unstable kind of thing. When the kind of pri high price each of the member of the cartel are expecting no, when price is not increasing that much, okay, so each of the member will suspect the other member we negotiated and we decided that voluntarily we will cut down production everybody, I will cut down production, my production, you will cut down your production and all. People will suspect other perhaps I am cutting down my production, but others are, are not cutting down their production. As a result, the, the amount supply curve is supposed to shift, perhaps supply curve is not shifting that much. As a result, the amount of price increment we are expecting, price is not increasing that much. So, there is a very interesting story, we will discuss its counterpart in oligopoly market, you will realize that two effects are there. One effect what we are discussing, elasticity of demand is getting larger over time, over longer span of time, but not only that, actually the people will suspect each other, perhaps others are not following the price cut or supply cutting strategy or production cutting strategy. Okay as they, they guaranteed or as they assured to other members, perhaps they are not behaving uh, uh, that way. Okay. So, that suspicion over time will happen that the cartel will break, okay. that we will discuss in oligopoly market, that is very interesting things. Okay. Let us discuss the last uh, uh, case, right. can drug interdiction, interdiction increase drug related crime. That is the question. Let me tell you the story. You know that in US, okay, US uh, lot of illegal drug transaction is there, illegal drug transaction worldwide is there, but in US I am bringing because it is a geographical location I can make you uh, understand easily what is the situation happening there. Okay. So, lot of drugs are usually from the Mexico border side, Mexico side that border uh, illegally lot of drugs used to come inside the US market because demand for drug is there in inside US market. Okay. So, what should be the US government better strategy? US government can do two things, maybe tighten the security at the border, right, so that this drug cannot come illegally in that way, right, that is one way. Another way what is, what could be the other better way, I am coming to that. So, what will happen, say suppose demand for drugs as usual quantity supplied this side, quantity demanded that side we are measuring, price in the horizontal axis we are measuring, right. So, so, suppose this was the supply of the drug in US market. When you are tightening the Mexico side border through which major drug illegal way drug uh, is coming inside the country, if you tighten that border, supply within the country of drug will fall. So, supply curve will shift leftward. 
but demand curve is this kind because people who are the addicted to drug, drug is basically a necessary commodity to them, right. So, what will happen? Since it is a necessary commodity, absolute elasticity of demand for drug is less than 1. Okay. So, when supply is actually falling, price is increasing and quantity transaction is falling. Okay. But since elasticity is this, elasticity is less than 1. So, the way price will increase, quantity will not fall that much faster rate that is why it is less than 1. right? So, as a result price into quantity or total revenue that will increase R will increase because increment thing is much more faster than the fallen thing. So, their product will increase. So, what will happen? These people know who are drug addicted, who are the users of the drug, right? And they need more money now to purchase the drug. Okay, although less amount of quantity drug available now in the in the in the market, okay, and they need more money to purchase that drug because they are addicted to them. So, as a result, what will happen? This this people who are user of the drug, they are addicted, they used to involve in drug related activities or criminal activities. Through that criminal activities involvement, they, uh, they get money to purchase the drug and consume, right. So, as a result, this is the true actually drug interdiction and due to that interdiction, if you if you try to tighten the supply curve okay, or supply, you, if you try to reduce the supply or increase the price, reduce the supply for that price is increasing, right? Price of the drug is increasing, right? If you do that, actually drug related crime may increase because the people even after this shortage, shortage of supply who are going to purchase that drug okay, because not that much uh, people, not that much amount of quantity of uh, sub, uh, or quantity equilibrium transaction of the quantity of drug will fall, right? but price will increase high. So, after this price adjustment people who can be able to purchase still drug, right? they need more money. right? So, they will in involve into more and more drug related crime. Okay. So, with this message uh, we can have a we can we can go for a uh, what is the ideal policy in this case right because drug has lot of negative health benefits right say cigarette smoking right. If you want to uh, reduce the amount of smoking okay, within the country. So, two ways are there supply of the smoking. So, supply of the cigarette and demand for the cigarette. Right. So, if you try to say increase the price of the cigarette, what will happen that uh, it may the case that, that not that much people say suppose you are increasing that through the cigarette supply, you are trying to cotton the supply S1, initially S later S1. Okay. So, price of the cigarette will increase huge, quantity will fall little bit. Okay, and as a result, even after the supply shortage, right, people who are going to purchase that cigarette or those kinds of drugs, right, uh, they has to, they have to spend more money. Okay, so they may involve in lot of drug related crimes. So best way to reduce this kinds of bad habit of the people which has health hazard and all those things, best way is not try to reduce the consumption through increase in price, rather try to this is the supply car try to reduce the demand car how we can do that through some social awareness campaign and all those things no if you see that uh, cigarette packet on that packet no some statutory warning is there right smoking is injurious to your health and all those things or certain social campaigning kind of thing it has its uh, health hazards, okay, it is detrimental for your health and all those kinds of social campaigning thing. If you do, if you make people aware about those things, so people will try to demand for cigarette will less. So, demand curve will shift from say suppose D 1 to D 2 place left side. So, as a result definitely consumption of the cigarette will fall definitely. Okay. So, so, so what is the message? Message is that the commodity for uh, of which have some sort of negative effect on the consumers of that product right 
increase in price perhaps through imposition of high tax and all that may not be a very good policy rather try to reduce its demand for that commodity in the society through maybe social awareness campaign and all that will be a better policy. Let us stop here, take care.